All right, so now we are going to say how we determine the refractive index of uh, any substance that can cause refraction. Is that okay? We are going to demonstrate the experiment live. Now on the board here, where there are two methods we're going to look at, but the first method is the real and apparent depth method. We also call it method of non-parallax. Parallax. What do we do in that method? It's a simple thing. It's something everyone can do from his or her house. All right. So we are encouraging you students to try this at home. Is that okay? Now, this is the diagram. We have a container. The container has water in it. Then at the bottom of the container, as you could see, are you getting me right? We have an object. When we are going to practice, when we're going to do the experiment, this is the object we're going to use. This is a coin, right? This is a coin. We are using this glass cup as our container, so we would put the coin inside the container. Just take a look quickly from the bottom here, all right, which of course is our table here, to this top is the real depth. Are you following? So this is the object that is kept um, at the bottom of the container, which is our cup here. The object we're going to place is the coin. We have this water, the dots here. It's expected that when you look at this directly from top, that is why we say no parallax, okay? And then you search through this side. You can actually figure out that this object will be lifted up. The bottom will become shallower than what the real depth is. So from where you see the object upwards, we call it the apparent depth. I'm using A, D for it. Then, from the bottom to where the object appears to be lifted up to, are you getting? We call it what? Okay, and we're going to use D to represent it. So, friends at home, let us practice this now, right? Do you have your search pin? The pin you're going to use in searching for it. So, pick it. Alright, so it's going to be there. Now, this is our water, right? We're going to open the water, but first, I'll keep this coin at the bottom of this cup. Good. Slide on it now. Now we'll pour this water. Pour in the water up to a particular depth. Up to a particular depth. Alright, so let's see. We would mark off certain um, heights so that we would use it to do our calculation. So if you're looking at this water, the volume of water that the height, let me give the marking from where our viewers at home would be looking at it. So this is the height. This height from the bottom would be the real depth. You can see your own height from there. So we use this mark, uh, this uh, ruler to actually measure it. Mm -hmm. But I will take the measurement when I am done. That's why I'm actually marking it. It is time. We are going to get up and then view from the top directly. You'll be looking down at an angle of 90 degrees. And then you use this to check where the coin is actually going to be seen from the side. But you're looking directly down, whereas you're going to use the search pin to show where the coins is assumed to be the depth in which it's going to be. So please get up now. You place it. You're going to trace from this side so that uh, our viewers can see that. So where are you seeing the coins? With the coin rather. Is that where you're seeing it? Okay, so I'm going to mark it. I'm going to mark it. Good. Take it off. So this is the point. He saw the coin. Mm -hmm. This is the point he saw the coin. So you could see clearly, just imagine, this is the bottom. This is the bottom, right? But when he viewed the coin from the top, what happened? It became shallow. It became shallow, it was lifted up. Because this is what is assumed to be the bottom now. And this is just a simple experiment. All we need to do is measure the height from the bottom to where you saw the coin. Are you getting? That height is called what? Apparent displacement. Apparent displacement. Then... The height from where you saw the coin to where the surface of the water is in the cup. 
It's called what? Apparent depth. Apparent depth. Of course, we know the real depth already, which is from this height down to the bottom here. But so, all we now need to do is to measure this height. Are you following right? Accordingly, and then to get the refractive index of the water that we use, the formula that refractive index N is equal to real depth, real depth, uh, which is uh, RD all over, all right? The next is apparent depth. So, this is the formula. We're going to use apparent depth and apparent depth to use a uh, 80 for it. Are you getting so with, with this we substitute and get our value? But let me ask you a question look at this apparent displacement because in the formula of refractive index, this is what we need the real depth and the apparent depth. But there are some cases you might not be given the apparent depth. Are you getting me right? Maybe in theoretical case, you are given the apparent displacement. I know you don't need the apparent displacement in this formula, isn't it? Yes, so let me ask. Just imagine now that in theoretical case, a question is given to you, the apparent depth is not given, you're given apparent displacement, and you know that you're given apparent displacement and real depth, you need to get apparent depth. So what would you do to get that apparent depth? Oh, you do real depth. All right, so note, apparent depth, which is AD, is equal to what? Real depth. Uh-huh. Minus. Mm -hmm. Apparent displacement. Okay. So that is the reason why we really have to get this apparent uh, displacement you understand that right so good it is time now we're going to take all this measurement are you following right yes. you know take all this measurement i would like you to take the measurement for viewers okay so that uh, they would see how this is being done would we'll measure the real depth the apparent depth the apparent displacement as well to and of course we would substitute it fix it into this formula and get the refractive index of this water Mm -hmm. So, can you please come this way quickly? I'm going to shift this closer. I'm going to shift this closer. And then we'll place our meter rule. Okay. You know, adjust. Or adjust this way. So, first of all, get, get the real depth. 12.5. Um, 12.5. .5. Okay. So, I think I'm going to put it down for you. Apparent. Is that the apparent depth or real depth? Real depth. Real depth, which is uh, okay, RD. So from the experiment we've just run, the real depth is equal to 12 point what? Five. Five centimeter. Mm -hmm. Get uh, the next depth. Hold the ruler. You do it yourself. Um, uh, upper, wh which depth do you want to get now? Apparent displacement. Apparent displacement, okay. Which is... um. um Apparent displacement, we used uh, capital letter D for it. Uh -huh. What did you get? Um, 5.6 cm. Then we are left with what? Apparent depth. Apparent depth. We use uh, A, D for it. So what's the apparent depth there? Um, 7.2. Okay, 7.2 cm. So, we've gotten all the necessary depths. All right, get back to your seat. So, you see that you could actually do this from the comfort of your home. It's very simple. Nothing is there, all right, to verify this uh, refractive index of this water. And, of course, you can use any of uh, the heights, real height. I want to say this because one can actually work on this experiment on plot graph. Are you getting me? You can actually obtain apparent depth corresponding to different real depth. For example, the real depth we got here is 12.5 cm. I may choose to reduce the quantity of this water, the volume. If you reduce it, will the real depth still be 12.5 cm? No. No. And because the real depth is no longer 12.5 cm, it can if you run the experiment still, the apparent depth you're going to get, an apparent displacement, will be different from what we just got now. So if you're using different real depths, which is dependent on the, the volume of water you poured, are you getting? You'll be getting different apparent displacement. Sometimes you could run this experiment up to maybe, let's say, five times. Are you getting? Uh, that five times will be with different real depths. That different real depth will produce different apparent displacement. Are you getting? So if we say, okay, we run for five different real depths, we expect to get how many different apparent depths? Five. Five. 
with this we can plot a graph we can plot a graph of real depth against apparent depth are you following so subsequently in the next class that's what we're going to do plotting the graph of this thing we've done today are you getting we'll do for other values i'll give you the, the, the assignment all right you would use different values of real depth to get different values of apparent depth and then plot a graph of the real depth against apparent depth if you plot that graph get the slope the slope will also give you the value of refractive uh, index but let us quickly just calculate the refractive index based on what we got here meanwhile let me ask how do you feel doing this experiment i feel good good that's nice so viewers at home you can do this try it are you following watch the video follow the steps that we took and then you can actually verify or find out the refractive index of uh, the water that you used all right so let's now substitute into this formula get the value get your calculator and press it for us let's see in the case here for our experiment n is equal to the real depth what did we get the real depth 12.5 so we're gonna have 12.5 divided by the apparent depth what did we get 7.2 7.2 so divide that and tell me 12.5 divided by 7.2 it's gonna be about one point something so let's find out 1.736 so 1.74 it has no unit because it is centimeter centimeter are you following this is the refractive index of this water are you following right yes. even if you go through graphical method what you would get will still be approximately equal to 1.74 so viewers do you see how we've actually conducted experiments to get the extent to which this water can cause what bending of light rays to which the water can cause refraction is it tough no. it's just a simple thing we can actually play with right from your home so remember working with the GMAT 41, you get the best in science and mathematics. All right, so put up your calculation. But remember, that um, apparent displacement we did, which is equal to real depth minus, uh, okay, apparent depth is equal to real depth minus apparent displacement. The reason for that is when you come to calculation, are you getting theoretical calculation? Your examiner, your teacher, may choose not to give you apparent depth the teacher may decide to give you apparent displacement and what real depth but you know that in refractive index do you need to use apparent displacement yes no you don't need apparent displacement which means you have to substitute for apparent displacement using this formula to get what apparent depth is that not so so that's really why we actually brought out the concept of this second formula we will note here all right so it's a nice time with your friends the next class we are going to use this to verify snell's law is that okay we're gonna use this to verify snell's law and also we're gonna use this to determine the refractive index of this uh, triangular prism